Hello bright and beautiful world! Welcome back to my channel and I have another book review for you today. The book that I will be reviewing today is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. It is a fae fantasy novel kind of similar to A Court of Thorns and Roses but with a totally different premise. So we follow our main character Jude who is a human as well stuck in this fae world that she's been brought into because of the man who killed her mother who was her mother's first husband and his name is Matic. So he takes her and her two sisters Taryn and Vivi and he sweeps them up into the fey world where Jude now resides with her two sisters. So Vivi who is her older sister is half fey half mortal and she completely despises all fey solely because of the fact that Matic killed her mother or their mother and so she is completely against the entire fey world and she does not want to have anything to do with it. Um, for our main character Jude, she despises the fey but she feels that as long as she's more powerful than them and understands the rules and is a part of this, wor this world in some way or form that she has control over her life rather than being a human who has no control over her life. So we follow Jude as she goes through her world or her time in the fey world and you kind of just see her as a character interact with these different fairies and with this world um, that's completely, you know, different from what the mortal world is and actually quite different from how I thought the fey world would be viewed so I really liked Holly Black's inclusion of what the world looked like and how she described it because I thought it was just great. So to start off with the spoiler free review I want to talk about the world building that Holly Black starts with her novel. So instantly we're in the mortal world and something that I liked about this aspect is that she starts with a kind of prologue that is in third person point of view. And it's from the point of view of Jude, but it's third person. And then the entire rest of the novel is in first person Jude point of view, which I thought was very interesting in a really um, unique style to how to start the novel. Um, I don't entirely know what the purpose of that is, but I thought it was very interesting. And I know she starts each of the books that she's got going on with this trilogy in that same way. So I thought that was an interesting style that she had. Um, so we're instantly in the mortal world and then her parents are murdered by Matic who is a general of the Fey world. So he's a part of the Fey world but he's the general of the army that they have in there. And so he takes the kids into the Fey world and from the rest of the point we're there except for a couple of scenes where Jude and her sisters are in the mortal world. Um, but I would like to talk about the fact that I was not confused at all in this world. I knew there were different type of fae. I knew what they looked like. Every character was very distinct in my mind. I knew what they looked like. I knew how they would talk. I knew how, you know, they would react to certain uh, situations and just they were perfectly done in the fact that I knew where I was at what moment and what was going on. So. There are some things that she establishes early on, like some of the rules that go along with the world of Fae, how it affects mortals when they're in the Fae world, and just all kinds of things like that. So I really commend her for having these rules and having this world and just following along with it without having us get lost or stuck anywhere. So in terms of the negative aspects, something that I wanted to talk about for this novel was the fact that some of the characters seem to have their own tales or story that were not connected to Jude's, or at least in my opinion, didn't feel that they connected with Jude's. So this whole novel is supposed to be based around Jude and the things in her life. And there was a bit of like a murder mystery tale going on woven in the background. And I just didn't completely understand if the things that we were learning about these other characters in the novel we're supposed to be related to that or if we were supposed to have some sort of connection to that and I'll kind of talk about that later in the spoiler filled review just because I don't want to give anything too major away in case if you decide you want to read this novel um, but I just felt like there were too many questions especially in terms of this whole murder mystery type of tale that was going on um, that I just needed a little bit more answers for that kind of stuff and I just didn't seem to get that and it makes sense because it's through Jude's point of view so if she doesn't know we don't know but we just never know <laughs> so I kind of wanted a little bit more on that um, 
But I think this book is really great. It's easy to read. Um, there wasn't any place that I felt stuck or like I couldn't start the novel. Um, I did get confused in the very beginning um, and whose point of view we were in at first because I didn't understand the switch from the third point of view to the first point of view, first person point of view. Um, and I had to skip a couple of pages ahead to make sure that yes, I was in Jude's point of view and that's where you stick with the whole novel. Um, but that just was something that I had to go through because I wasn't sure exactly where I was standing. Um, and another thing that I want to mention is the fact that I did stop towards the middle right before one of the major events in the story and I felt that was because it kind of was dragging a little bit um, in terms of the exposition and um, sort of like Jude's training in a sense of her, you know, building up her stamina and building up her you know, character to be able to stand against these fae if need be. Um, so there was a part where I kind of let it sit for a couple hours and then I picked it up again to keep going. Um, but as soon as I was back into the action with that one event that I will talk about later in the spoiler filled review, um, I was fine. I was able to read and there was no part where I was confused or stuck anymore. So it's an easy read, very interesting. And I just think it's a great read for anybody who's interested in learning about Faye or wanting to read more about Faye. Um, also to kind of like get this action and kind of like kick ass, you know, female main character without being too feminist, if like if you want to call it that, or too female. Um, I know some people tend to not pick up certain books when they have main female characters because of the fact they're like, oh, I don't want to follow a girl. Um, this is mostly, I guess, for the guys, but um, it's a really great read. I thought there was a lot of great action, a lot of great drama. Um, there was nothing that I wasn't able to follow along with except for that one part where I had to put it down, um, but it's not that I couldn't follow along. I was just kind of getting bored of all of the constant back and forth of the training, um, but overall, I think it's a really great book, and there wasn't a place that I didn't like. Um, I just think that pacing could be a little bit better in certain areas. Um, but overall, it was a really great read. I think I read it within a day and a half, so not too long. Um, it's quite a thick novel. Most of these are really, really thick novels, um, but they're filled with a lot of great lyrical and, you know, detailed words and just content that's, I think, great. Um, and most of these I'm going to talk about in a later video. But most of these are used for me so that I can get more knowledge on Faye. Wink, wink, if you want to keep that hint for something that will come up later. Um, but most of these was just for me to kind of get lost in the world of Faye, figure out how each person sees the world of Faye, because Faye lore is very much wide and diverse, and there's always back and forth. So it was good to see that each author has their own version of Fae and how the Fae world would look and be. So now I want to move into the spoiler filled review. So if you are interested at all in reading this novel or want to just, you know, get a go for yourself and not have any spoilers, um, these are things that I think are major plot points or major scenes in the novel that could become spoiler ish if you intend to read the book and don't want to be spoiled on anything I will leave a time code right here that you can skip ahead to if you want to figure out what the next novel I will be um I will be reviewing is and from there we will get into this spoiler filled review so one of the first things that I wanted to talk about was the diversity between the fae so each person in the world is a different fae, is a differently described, no one has the same look, no one has the same attitude, and I thought that was really well done. Something that I wanted to kind of briefly mention about that though was the fact that I wasn't sure if there was different parts of the land, and um, Holly Black does include a map in the very front, but I feel like some of those places weren't talked about enough that I could kind of be like, hey, this person's from here and this person's from here. Um, so I kind of wanted a little bit more on that. Like, why are there different, you know, and she gives a great overview and kind of description of the fact that there is a main king, the elder king, and he's the main person, which I thought that was great. I could follow along with that. 
Um, I think I just wanted a little bit more on the different areas of the Fey world. Um, and if there are humans in the land, how is that detrimental to them? So how is how would that affect Jude and how does that, you know, does she think about ever leaving to a different area or is she just simply stuck in this one spot? Um, so that was just something I wanted to know about. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention was Oriana, who is Oak's mother, um, which you find out later that he is not her biological child. She is just caring for him because of her friend. Um, this goes along with that murder mystery aspect where I needed more. Um, why is Oriana so so special that she has to be the one to take care of Orc, um, of Oak? And why is like why is she the one who has to take care of him in that sense? Um, the whole aspect of Oak being royal didn't completely sit with me in the right way, I guess. I I thought it was a great kind of plot twist. Um, which I will talk about later when I talk about one of the other plot twists that really, like, got me, um, like, I didn't see coming at all. Um, so I thought this book really flowed. Um, there wasn't a plot, a place where I didn't feel the pacing was, um, too much in terms of the plot points. Um, I was able to follow along with Jude. I was able to kind of understand the plans that she had, except for this one plot twist that I'll mention. Um, so I didn't think that there was a problem with that. I just wanted a little bit more information on the whole aspect of Oriana and Maddox taking in Oriana and Oak. I just, there was something about that and I'm sure I'll get more information with The Wicked King, which is the other novel that follows after this. It's a part of a trilogy um, and I will be doing a book review for that soon. But I just needed a little bit more information on that and I guess it just leaves it open-ended so you can be like, hey, I need to read the next one to find out. Um, but I just needed a little bit more on that, if that makes sense. Um, I just felt like there was a bit too much vagueness with, yeah, she's here and Oak is royalty. I needed a little bit more on that. How is it that they're barely finding this out now? Um, what exactly was Maddox planning to do with Oak if Jude hadn't figured it out? Or if maybe Jude had figured out a different plan that he wasn't even thinking about? Um, it was just little things like that that I kind of wanted a little bit more information on. Um, and I'm sure we'll get that later on because we still don't get a confrontation between Jude and Maddox before the end of the book. Um, so I'll, I'll be waiting to see how that goes. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was the big event that got me back into the book after I had put it down for a couple of hours. So one of the main points in the book, it's about the halfway point of the novel, is when the Elder King decides it's time for him to step down and he's about to crown one of his children the next king. And so you have this whole thing of the whole aspect of was somebody going to be poisoned? Was somebody going to be murdered? Um, was somebody going to be assassinated? And so you have all of the characters at this big event and it starts off how it's supposed to. And then of course, you have the fighting brothers and the whole aspect of the drama and all of that. But the one thing that I couldn't grasp onto was the empathy or the sympathy towards the deaths that occur. So the entire court or the entire line of royalty for that court is murdered, like right then and there, except for Cardin, of course. <laughs> Prince Cardin is nowhere to be found during this slaughtering. And of course, it kind of briefly brushes over it later in the novel that this wasn't intentional, that if he had been with his family, he also would have been murdered. So it kind of is established that if Cardin had been there, he would have also been killed or he would have had to put the crown on Balkan's head. Um, but at the same time, I felt like there needed to be a little bit more explanation on that. He was there when the event started. Jude does see him and he is partially drunk when she sees him. Um, and she does end up finding him later after the event is already over. But I kind of wanted a little bit more explanation. Where did he go? What was he doing? Did he know his family was going to be killed? He says later on that he didn't. Um, but he was living with Belkin, so I kind of wasn't sure entirely if he if he was lying or if he was telling the truth. Um, and so just the one thing about that, that whole event that kind of threw me off for a loop was it was a very great shock factor. Um, and I want to talk about this in a video later, 
Um, but there's a difference between suspense and shock, and also shock and feeling the pain and loss of a death. Um, for me personally, when I include deaths into my novels, I want them to have a meaning. They need to have a purpose of some sort. And this, these deaths definitely did because therefore there is no one else who can put the crown on Balkan's head except for Cardin. Which makes sense to have him be the only one because he's one of the mainer characters in the novel. But at the same time, these deaths just felt kind of bland. Like I felt the shock factor, the shock factor of having all of these Fae be killed. But at the same time, we barely get any time with the characters before they're dead that I didn't feel anywhere near being like, oh my gosh, they're dead. You know, it was kind of just like, whoa, they're dead. Like, what's going to happen now? Um, and I kind of wanted a little bit more feeling. Um, I wonder if maybe there was other different deaths. Um, maybe if more people were included, some other characters that we had already known about. Um, maybe some people from Cardin's group. Um, his little, like, friend villainy group, um, that maybe it would have been a little bit different, um, but it just mostly felt like a shock factor that, I don't know, I kind of felt kind of if about it afterwards. Um, the more that I thought about it, the more that I was like, oh, I don't know how well that scene played out. It's a great scene, and it had me hooked the entire time. I wanted to know what was happening, I wanted to know what was going to happen, um, later on, um, so there's nothing wrong with that scene. I just feel like the deaths could have had a little bit more purpose to them than just, well, now there's only going to be one person who can crown him and that happens to be Cardin. Um, so that was just one thing that I wanted to briefly mention. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was the servant girl that um, Jude saves from Belkin's like estate. Um, she's saved, and there's this great emphasis on the fact that Jude saved this one human girl. She decides to save one of these servants who is stuck in the trance of, like, the magical fruit of the fae fruit. Um, and she decides to save her by having her eat salt, which happens to be the only thing that can keep the humans from falling under the trance of the fae food that they have there in the world. Um, but I didn't entirely understand what the purpose of her saving that one servant girl was. So you get a little bit of background about that servant girl, why she's there, you know, what happened to her, kind of, um, who she is in a sense. And they're about to take the servant girl back to the mortal world, even though Jude and Vivi can see that she's kind of deranged and very much having a PTSD moment because of this whole event and she falls into a lake and disappears. What? What was the point of saving this one girl for her to just die? And then Jude doesn't even kind of like she briefly has like this moment of like oh I'm so sad like she died I tried to save her. Why did you try to save her? <laughs> Like, what was, what was your intention of having her as an ally, um, someone that you could use against Balkan, someone you could use um, against Cardin? I, I wasn't entirely sure what the point of saving this one girl was. And of course, this could change later in The Wicked King, like, she could come back and have some sort of, like, a big deal. And I think it's briefly mentioned that someone did pull her from the lake and they are, like, a part of, like, she is a servant again. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to understand the point of having her be saved. I know it boosts Jude's kind of heroism and makes her, like, seem like a good guy. She wants to save this girl from having a life of misery. But I completely wasn't entirely sure in terms of the plot of why it was important for her to save this one girl. Um, and it doesn't, it's not really explained in the cruel prince why it's done but it is done so i just wanted a little bit more on that um moving on to a different point that i thought needed a little bit more was the fact that jude and taryn are twin sisters identical twin sisters twin sisters and i'm not a twin myself but from the twins that i've known in my life and the things that i've seen in movies and books and heard about through the grapevine about what it means to be a twin and how different it can be for a twin, I didn't feel that they were twins. Um, I didn't even feel like they were sisters at all. Um, there was a lot of times where 
Taryn was just a terrible sister. There are plenty of moments in the book where Taryn is just the worst sister to ever walk the earth. And it's a completely, like, whiplash when you look at Vivi, because Vivi is, like, the perfect sister. She's, you know, compassionate, she's sweet, she's constantly trying to take care of her sisters, trying to constantly get them out of danger. Um, and I just didn't understand that push and pull. Like, why is it that the only sister, you, you know, like, she's their half-sister, but I still felt more of a connection between Vivi and Jude than I did Jude and Taryn. And what I know of twins, or what I've heard of twins, is that they're inseparable. Um, usually they, you know, there's moments where they have bickering or fighting and they're not, you know, completely, um, you know, tied at the hip. But most of the time, twins are inseparable. They're constantly loving, constantly they have a bond, um, you know, like those kinds of little things. And I didn't feel that with Jude and Taryn at all. They were very much polar opposites, which, ten which tends to happen with twins. Um, but I think too much, in a sense. Jude is very much brave and courageous and sticks up for herself and her sisters. Um, and just kind of is that outgoing person. And Taryn is very much a, let me hide in the corner. Um, which I found to be a very bland characteristic. It made her a very bland character. Um, she's very conformative and she has every right to be. She can be whatever she wants to be. She wants to be the wife of some high fae and, you know, become a part of the fae society this way. And Jude wants to become a warrior or a knight or, you know, a part of the, you know, way to kind of fight against the fae, but also being a part of them in a sense. And I thought that Taryn needed a little bit more to be that sister. It kind of just felt like this one kid that Jude feels needs, you know, she needs to take care of. Even the the servant girl that she saved had more of a purpose than Taryn did. Um, I didn't feel like there was enough of Taryn to be the sister that Jude was trying to protect. And, you know, it just felt like even though Jude was making these decisions and having these actions that were putting her in the crossfire of these Fey and especially Prince Cardin and his group, um, I still felt like she was doing more than Taryn, you know, like doing more for herself than Taryn was. Taryn was the one who was causing more of the, you know, grief and the, you know, destruction because of the fact that she kept kind of just bowing down. I think the fact that Jude stands up to Cardin and his group is a very admirable thing. And even though it gets her into some really bad situations, she still grows from these situations. You know, it's not like Taryn who's backing down and kind of like, you know, and it just, uh, there were a lot of decisions that Taryn made that I was just like, what are you doing? Um, and she wasn't thinking of Jude, whereas Jude was thinking of her and her other family, and Taryn was thinking of Taryn. And I just felt like that was a really unnecessary thing. I feel like if you took Taryn out of the novel, you wouldn't be missing much, other than the fact that there's a huge betrayal um, multiple times throughout the novel between Jude and Taryn, and Taryn just constantly backstabbing and betraying Jude, and I just, as a sister and as a sibling, I did not agree with any of the decisions that Taryn made, and I felt like they were betrayals to me um, as a sister, in the sense of, I kept thinking, how can you do this? How can you do this? Um, so I just really irked me the way that she constantly acted. Um, but it was, it made good drama, but it was enough that I was like, okay, I'm done with her. Like, I don't want to, you know, read about Taryn anymore. She's kind of just too much in a sense. Um, one of the other things that I kind of want to talk about before I read into the good things of this book, um, was Locke and his character. So, Locke instantly becomes a very recognizable character along with Prince Cardin. Um, I don't have very many negative things to say about Prince Cardin. I think he's a really great main character. Um, I don't know about being a main character love interest. I'll have to see with the Wicked King um, to see how I feel about that. But as a main character himself without being connected to Jude in the love interest aspect, I think he's a very strong, very prominent character. Um, he made me laugh quite a lot. Um, and I just thought he was really well written, um, really well done. So I don't have much to say about him, but as for Locke, who is a part of Cardin's kind of like villainy group, 
Um, I thought that he needed a little bit more. There was a lot to him that I didn't quite understand. He has this running gag of wanting to be on the winning side or wanting to be with someone who has a story to be told, which who doesn't want to be with someone who has a story that needs to be told? You know, that's every person in life. Um, but what I didn't completely understand was his motives and his kind of place in the novel. So he starts off as being one of Cardin's like villainy people. So he's a part of that group. And then you kind of get a little bit more of him and Jude together. And he starts to become this nice guy all of a sudden who cares about Jude and kind of takes care of her for a little bit and they're together for a while. Um, and then he becomes this person that's a part of the murder mystery story. So you find out that his mother, his mother was the one who is Oak's real mother and was the one who had a infidelity with the other brother and I wasn't the other prince brother and I wasn't completely sure where Holly Black was taking that. Um, for a while I thought that Locke was the, the hidden royal or the son that was hidden and so I thought he was the one who was going to become the next prince of some kind or the next person. Um, but then you find out that it's Oak and that didn't make sense to me. So Oak and Locke are now siblings, in a sense. Um, I just wanted more explanation on backstory and why Locke is imp important to this story. Um, he seemed just like another way to add a false um, villain or a red heron. I just didn't completely know why his character was important for this story other than to add more drama and kind of get us all over the place. Um, so I wanted more on him. So now to move into the positive aspects of this story, um, I just want to quickly mention the world building again. There was a really strong um, world that Holly Black creates. I wasn't lost anywhere. I wasn't confused. Um, it was perfect setup, perfect do perfectly done. Um, Jude as a main character is very, very strong. Um, I thought a lot of the decisions she made were perfectly done, um, and decisions that even, you know, like, if I were put into this story that I would make, um, she's a very active character, and that is, like, the perfect example of what an active character is for me, um, so I thought she was a really great active character, and I just wanted to see more of what her decisions were and how she was going to react to different things. Um, some of my favorite characters are the Ghost and the Roach, um, those little assassin group that Jude ends up becoming a part of. Um, I thought that was really well written. Um, all of the rules that are established and kind of just followed throughout the book flowed really well and I just thought they were perfectly done. And there wasn't a part where I didn't feel like the rules weren't being followed or that I didn't know what a rule was. So that was just a really great example of world building. Um, another thing that I want to briefly talk about is Prince Cardin again. Um, he's one of my favorite characters in the story, even though he's a complete ass in the very beginning. Um, he ends up becoming a more like formidable character that I really thought was just great. And I wanted to see more of him and I can't wait to read The Wicked King because there's more of him. Um, and he is going to be the main um, king and all of that. And the other thing that I want to talk about that was greatly done was the final plot twist that I haven't mentioned yet, um, which was the fact that Prince Cardin becomes King Cardin. And this is all done through um, Jude teaching Oak how to say the words to put the crown on Cardin's head. And I thought that the entire time that Jude was going to have Oak be the prince or the king, and then as soon as he was ready to take in power, he would come back to the Fey world after being in the mortal realm and kind of learning about what it means to be a king. Um, and I was ready for it. And then all of a sudden, she puts the crown on Cardin's head, and I thought it was a great plot twist. I think it was just a great addition to the ending of the novel, um, and really set up the ending for the Wicked King. Um, and the last little banter that Jude and Cardin have right before the very end of the novel, I thought perfectly established and I was ready for whatever was next in The Wicked King. So I just think that the ending and that plot twist were one of the best things about this novel because it really threw me for a loop. I didn't see it coming. I thought I was smart and knew it was going to happen and knew Jude's plan the whole time. But lo and behold, I was not. <laughs> so it was just great to have that little, you know, insight at the end to see how she thought 
you know, how Jude was thinking about everything. So I thought it was really great. Um, that is it for my review of The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Um, I'm going to give this novel a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, I think that there was just a little bit more that could have been explained. There wasn't enough that I, you know, could leave without having too many questions. Um, but still, it was a really great and fun read. There wasn't anywhere that I wasn't on the edge of my seat wondering, like, what the hell is going to happen next. Um, so I just think it's a really great book. Um, definitely give it a read if you haven't already. Um, it's just amazing. <laughs> so thank you guys again for tuning in to my videos. And I really hope you liked this book review. If you have any questions or want to know more, please leave the comments that leave a comment down below and I will get to those. And I just want to say thank you so much for always coming and I will see you in the next video. Bye.